guys and welcome back to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith and today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different than we normally do. We're going to take a break from sewing and I thought it'd be really cool to do a project. I have a craft fair coming up and I'm trying to get all this stuff done and I have stuff that I need to work on and stuff that I need to put aside for a second and so I needed somewhere to put all of that stuff. So I decided that I wanted to grab some Ikea boxes. Now I do have one, um, I think it's called Calyx, uh, that you can put these boxes in and they're perfect for storage. They're just the right size and they're big enough for some of my projects that they work really well. Um, now I've seen on YouTube how people take regular boxes, cut them up, and then put this on there and put the fabric on there and all that stuff, but they're not super sturdy. I really, really like the IKEA um, boxes. One, because of the size, they're pretty big. Um, two, because they're really sturdy. They're a lot sturdier than just your regular cardboard, so they're going to last a really long time. This video is not sponsored by IKEA, but if IKEA would like to sponsor a sewing room video, you know where to find me. <laughs> so, what I did was I grabbed some really cute fabric. It has a little mannequin on there and sewing machines and tape measures and folded up fabric. And I just, I really liked it. One, because it was dark. Um, I have kids. It is what it is. Stuff gets dirty and you're, you're constantly going to be using these things. So I wanted something dark so that you didn't see all of that. So uh, the next thing I liked is that it had a cute little like sewing theme, which I don't like some of the stuff that I've seen it. I love you, Ikea, but there's not nothing like crafty looking prints that I really like. So I figured I would grab some fabric and I'll make them the way that I want them to be. So what I did was I grabbed a ton of this fabric. Now I have four more to do after this. I gave myself a little break because I've actually got some other things I need to be doing at the time. But these have already come in handy. Already. It's great. I only had them for like a week or so. Um, anyway, so what you're going to do is uh, you're going to cut out a piece that is 20 and a half inches tall by 55 and a half inches wide. And also, if you've got a directional print, this is where it's really going to be important that you pay attention to how you're cutting it out. That's why. Yeah, we found out the hard way that I didn't cut out the fabric the right direction. So my fabric on one of them is going to go like sideways. And then when I cut out my second one, I got it right. So, note to self. Y'all know how much I love directional fabric. Anyway, make sure that when you're cutting out your directional fabric that it's 20 and a half tall. So whatever it is, if your fabric is going this way. Um, I found that I got the 44 inch fabric and it wasn't long enough to go obviously to 55 inches. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have a seam somewhere to make it to the 55. Now if you uh, order special fabrics online that come 56 to 60 inches wide, you'll be fine. Um, but if you're buying it from a regular store, um, I actually got this from Joann's. Not sponsored, but Joann's. Um, if you're going to get the shorter fabric, then you're going to have to have a seam. Once you put the Mod Podge on there, it really didn't bother anything. So. Um, that's also something else you're going to need for the project is some Mud Pudge. Hopefully you can see that. Um, for two of these boxes, I don't think you can see it, but it's right about here. And I kind of layered and caked mine on. This is also the very first time I've ever done and worked with Mod Podge. I kind of had like a knowledge of how to do things, but anyway. We're going to get started now because that was a very long intro. <laughs> Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is cut your fabric 20 and a half by 55 inches. Then you're going to lay it out flat. Put your box flat onto the table. Start with one quarter of your box at a time. Now, I got my big weight and I put it on the inside of the box um, as I was tracing it so that the box wouldn't um, move around. And then I just kind of moved the weight as I was um, moving the box pieces. I would do a quarter of the box at a time. Take your time. Make sure that you're getting it right. Now, here is where I went ahead and I got really close to the box. Um, you could give yourself a seam allowance and then flip that piece up so that the bottom half doesn't have any seams on the bottom. 
Um, I didn't do it, and they, they look fine to me. They're just boxes that go on the shelf. So I don't want to trace around the entire box and make sure that you leave yourself about an inch or so at the top of the box so that you have that little flap to flip over. Now, once you've done that, you can cut it all out. Make sure that as you're tracing your fabric that the right side is down and that the wrong side is facing you. That's going to be really important so that when you lay it back down on top, on top of your box that it's facing the right way. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take one quarter of the box at a time and you're going to take your Mod Podge and spread it out nice and e as evenly as you can get it to go um, on your box. And what I would highly suggest is taking a quarter of the box at a time. Don't try and do one, two sides at a time or, or whatever. Take one quarter of the box at a time. That way, if you need to pick up the fabric and move it around, you'll be able to do that. If you've already done two sides, you kind of have to move fast to get the fabric where it needs to go. Just do a quarter at a time. Then with the right side up, lay out your fabric. You might have to pick it up. You might have to move it around, and it's okay at this point. You can just pick it up, shift it around, make sure that it's going where it needs to go. The next step, I took a card that I had and I just kind of smoothed it out and made sure there weren't any bubbles um, on the top side of the fabric. So take your time and just make sure that everything's nice and flat, no bubbles, and then you're going to repeat that process on the next flap. Now, Waiting and letting things dry would probably be a really good idea. I went ahead and I did both sides. Now, where I messed up was I got a piece of the cardboard that came with the box and I used that to protect my surfaces. Looking back, that probably wasn't the smartest thing I could have done. So make sure that you get some sort of tablecloth or some way to protect the surface that you're working with. Um, and then just do one side of the box at a time. So half of the box at a time, let it dry, do the Mod Podge spread on the top of the box, um, just let all of that dry. So I did a Mod Podge layer on the box, put the fabric down, and then I did a Mod Podge layer on top of that so that it seals the outside. Now, if there's another way or something else that you would top coat it with, please let me know in the comment section below because this was my first project with Mod Podge. And I like how it turns out. It's, it's really nice. So if there's another layer that I could have made it kind of shiny or whatever, let me know in the comment section below. Now, working with a cardboard, and I did one side, and I used a lot of glue. <laughs> I did one side, and then I flipped it over so that I could do the other side. What I should have done was I should have waited, and I should have let that dry and then come back and do the other side. That's what I should have done. So, learn from me what not to do. Then I flipped it over, and what happened was when I put the other not dry side down on the cardboard, it lifted up some of the cardboard. And you'll see that in some of the video. Um, I kind of zoomed in on it for you. So you just repeat the process on all four of your sides. parts. If you've Mod Podge the top of the fabric as you've been Mod Podging the top of your box, it is completely okay. Actually, it helps. If it's somewhat dry when you go ahead to do the handle part, it's great because your fabric is going to be a little easier um, to manipulate without it unraveling. So the Mod Podge on the handle part is absolutely fine. What I did was I took a um, X-Acto knife and I went and did just like you're going to do with a zipper. So I did a little, a little line right across the middle. And then I did a little triangle on one side. And then I did a little triangle on the other side. Just like you're going to do with a zipper. And then I peeled everything back and then started Mod Podging it down. And having it already Mod Podged, and at that point it was pretty much dry, uh, it just made it a whole lot easier to work with and cut and not have it unraveling on me. So don't worry if you got some Mod Podge. 
so easy to say. Mod podged on that, you'll be fine. So you get your innards done, and then once you've got your pockets, your little um, handle holes done, you could go back and cut out like a piece of felt or something on the inside, just to kind of lay it on top, make it look a little nicer. Um, they're my box, and so I really didn't care what they looked like on the inside, and that's fine. So I did both handles the same exact way, and then just mod podge like crazy because the handles are kind of important. I want to make sure those look really, really crisp. And really nice so that if somebody's looking at my shelf and they can see my boxes, they'll look nice. Then the next thing that I did was go around the very top and I took one side at a time and then cut it on the corner so that it would lay flat and then I mod podged on the box and then flipped the fabric over and then mod podged on top of that. And then I gave it a really good layer because I didn't want that coming up. Now if you look at the boxes, I went ahead and I left the top of the box black. You could do the top of the box too, just the same, in just the same manner. Um, but I just like the contrast of the black to the fabric. It's up to you really what you want to do. And then what I did was I put the box completely together, folded the inside of the bottom, and then what I did was I took a bowl and a paint can. You got to do what you got to do. I sat a bowl down with a paint can, flipped it upside down on itself, and then I let it dry. Um, now if I had done one side of the box at a time, you could have just left it flat on an area, and it would have been fine. Um, but that's what I ended up doing so that it would dry and it wouldn't stick to my table or whatever I was working on. You, you do them and you learn what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and that's fine. I hope you guys like this video. I know it was a change, um, but I needed to do something a little different. So that I had a place to store all of my little goodies while I'm working on different projects. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can just put them in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, you can give us a thumbs up. Or if you want to stick around and see more of my little IKEA hacks and projects, you can hit that subscribe button and YouTube will let you know when I've next uploaded. Um, I hope you guys like this video because it was kind of fun. And I have several more IKEA hacks that I've seen online that I've done in my sewing room. And they have been really amazing and I would love to share them with you guys. So if you want to see those videos, make sure you give the video a thumbs up so that I know that's something you guys want to see. I'll see you guys later. Thanks again for joining us here at FaithWorks Design. Bye guys.